Hey everybody, it's Lynette with the Skin Candy. I am not in my regular location. <clears throat> we are actually um, on a fishing trip out in, I guess it would be like northeastern Utah. We're in a place called Strawberry Reservoir. And we came out here for a few days so my husband could get some fishing in because it's been kind of a crapshoot of a summer. So I am a hot mess, but I'm camping. So I don't know if you wear makeup when you're camping, but I don't wear makeup when I'm camping. But today we're gonna be making soap in my trailer, in my fifth wheel. And I thought it would be fun if I gave you guys a little bit of a tour before we got started on our soap making. So I have really gotten into these RV videos because being a new RV owner and planning on doing a lot of traveling, not only for pleasure, but for my business, I thought that it would be really fun if I started getting some things together that would help the RV life. Just um, organizing, uh, what is it called? Organizing supplies. And so far it's been really fun. There's been a couple of things that um, I have watched and I've actually gotten that have been complete stupid duds. So I'm learning and I don't know if this is something you guys would even want to see, but hopefully you guys will like this. So we're gonna go ahead and get started. I'm gonna give you a tour and I have to turn my camera around. So I will be right back. Okay, so this is the view as if you were walking in my door. So we have a cupboard here. We have an actual cabinet here, but there's only one shelf in there and the rest is it's the inverter for the electrical and I don't know, a bunch of other stuff. Um, this is the pantry and look at this. There's really deep shelves. A um, couple things that were recommended that we get is a small like rice cooker or um, Instapot and an air fryer. So we went and we found a couple of small things. We actually picked these up over at Walmart and I've used the uh, rice cooker. It didn't cook the rice um, as well as it was, it was supposed to. So I've got to play with that and see what's going on. I have not used, I haven't even opened up the right, the air fryer yet because we haven't really been too many places since we got these. But so we have just all of our stuff. I have a lot of my soaping supplies right there. There's my butters and oil that I'll be using to make my soaps. Um, all of our snacks, my baking supplies. And um, love this counter right here. This counter, you can put stuff on it. I wouldn't recommend you put this stuff on, but like my husband's hat, things like that, and it actually stays put, which is really nice. Um, then we have um, our couch. This actually had two captain's chairs, and we opted to have it taken out and replaced with a couch. It is not the most comfortable couch in the world, but we got it because it pulls out into a bed. And we were planning on having family joining us on some of our camping trips which we've already done. We went to Lake Powell earlier this year and it was great because there were six of us in the trailer. We had two adults sleeping in this bed right here. And then if you turn around to the other side, which is right next to the door, um, this is a table, our table, and this actually pulls out into a bed as well. So um, what's really cool is underneath here, if you can see, there's like this little cubby and we have uh, stuff in here. We usually will put our shoes or something in there if there's a lot of us, but right now we have it for storage for some other things. I'm not even quite sure what that is. Um, then right here we have the tape, uh, the TV. The TV came with the the RV. It is a Vizio, I think it's a smart TV, so we can hook up, we can hotspot it to our phones, or if the RV park or wherever we're at um, offers Wi-Fi, we can log into the Wi-Fi and then we can watch Netflix and whatnot. And then um, it has a really good sound system and the system is right here so it does play dvds and we can get the radio and things like that and so we have two storage cupboards there right now we just have our in each one we have our videos and dvds in there um this is kind of turned into a game cabinet um this was our games and videos and just kind of our junk cabinet you know everybody's got to have one of those and then this is looking out we've got so this is the rv park um, I'm going to swing you around. I don't know if you can see out my window. So that's Strawberry Reservoir. We are in a place, I think it's called Strawberry Bay right now. And my husband's somewhere out on that water fishing. Fishing is his life's passion. 
So it's absolutely beautiful, stunning out here. I might go out a little while later, maybe take a walk um, after I'm done making my soap. And we have a lot of soap to make today. Um, one thing that was really appealing to us was this fridge. Most fridges, oh, hello, you get to see all of me. Um, most fridges are quite small. And this is our refrigerator. That's my lie right there. I stuck it in there to kind of help cool it down so you get started a little bit sooner. And the refrigerator and fridge both are just really huge. Um, so it has the door space. We do not have room right now except for on the very bottom. I don't even know if we can do it on the bottom to put a gallon of milk. So we just usually get like a half gallon, but we are going to fix that today. We have to pull out the gallon. <laughs> Oh, it's just it's gonna be quite the ordeal. We have to pull out our couch because the refrigerator doesn't open wide enough because it was made with captain's chairs. So it was a little bit different style. So we have to pull out the couch, unscrew the couch and pull it out. And then we will uh, open this up and be able to adjust that fridge. So we have a little bit more room on the top. So moving over to the back of the RV. So this is the back. So let me just kind of swing you around. We have our door. And then we have the table and then we have the counters. This was a big, a big thing for me is that I wanted something. I wanted a back kitchen it, just because they give, it gives you more room. So we have this really nice counter. I have probably three times more counter space than I did in our little tongue pull trailer. We have our stove and this is all run on propane and our oven. And so I really love this because it has a cover and then that just opens up. We put some, um, aluminum protectors down. They don't look the greatest, but hey, they work. And then I have all this cupboard space. All these cupboards are connected. So these four, these four cupboards right here, are all connected. It's one big top and bottom shelf. And so then we have like our bowls and plates. Every time we travel, I have to do reorg. I have to resituate everything and I have not done that yet today. So everything looks kind of crazy in there. Um, and then we have our, our plates and our cups and our bowls things like that up in here. We usually don't use paper plates, but we had those from our last trip. This is our corner cupboard. Um, it's really big and deep. Um, we put things like in it, with, mostly for storage and travel. We have our little travel toaster, um, our soda stream, our knife block will go up in here because we have all of this nice big room up here to keep these things from running around. We actually have a we have a microwave, which is our bread box. And then we have all these drawers right here, which is, it has my silverware and my cooking supplies and you know, garbage bags. And then underneath here, we have this big area underneath. <coughs> Excuse me. <clears throat> big storage space underneath um, that we have for cleaning supplies, our garbage, things like that. I don't know why that doesn't want to stay shut. And so that is the living room. And now we're gonna go up the stairs. So we have our front door, gonna go up the stairs. And then this is the bathroom. So our bathroom is kind of our storage room as well because we don't, there's not a lot of storage space in here. And so we have the toilet, we have a little cubby in here, which is where we keep um, the toilet paper. We have this nice big deep storage closet that we have for our towels hand towels, we just cause extra toilet paper or paper towels. And then this is my favorite. I don't know if you can see it as well, but this is the shower. It is a full size shower and has a little seat, it has the sprayer. And this is wonderful. Um, we can actually put a plug in the bottom and fill about three, four inches of water. So if we have our grandkids with us and my little granddaughter wants to take a bath, we could actually fill that up with water and she could actually take a bath in there. The, um, it's kind of cool how they do things. This is the door. I don't know if I can get it in here enough to show you. Let me back it up a little bit. Um, so this door has three sections. So when you're taking a shower, it closes into three sections. The only thing about it that I don't like is that some of the sections are overlap like these right here this section right here overlaps and you can't um it's uh it leaves you know everywhere you go you have hard water and so they have um they get hard water spots and it's really hard to get into those little crevices and clean them i need to get maybe like a little wand 
with a sponge on it or something that I can put my hard water cleaner on there. And then, hello, we have this nice big mirror and then it has the medicine cabinet. The only thing I do not like about this medicine cabinet is everything shifts, even if we have it packed and it'll fall forward. So my plan for this is that I'm actually going to get some um, binding, like binding or I mean like belting. And I'm going to make, what I'd like to do is make, um, put some uh, Velcro on each side, Velcro on each side and put like a piece of material over the top of this so that when we're traveling, this won't shift. And then when we come in, I can just pull that belting off and then put it back on when we're ready to go. So we have the sink, we have drawers right here. We have three drawers. And then underneath here is the under sink storage. So that's for our cleaning supplies, black cl water cleaner, um, garbage bags, toilet brush, blah, blah, blah. Um, here is our bedroom. And this has two pullouts. So there's a pullout where the free refrigerator and the, um, couch are and then the second pullout is actually for the closet so this this closet which I wish that we could have found one in the size of a trailer we have which is a 23 foot I really wish that we had could have been able to find one that had the bed right here so the bed would the bed would push out and then we would have more room in the bedroom but this was just the closet so we have the closet here um it's a it's a good size but it's not really great for a lot of storage so right now, like I have my little vacuum, my, I got a little Bissell, I think, or Eureka handheld, one of the little handheld battery operated vacuums, rechargeables. And then we have these three drawers. Surprisingly enough, these hold a lot of stuff. Then we have a little cubby here. We actually have quite a bit of storage room. We have storage room right there, storage there. We have storage all along here where we keep our blankets. And I think we have blankets in that one too. Right now, this is just keeping our extra sheets, things like that. And then the extra cubby right there. And then we each have little cubbies underneath they each have, I don't know if you can see, they each have a little light so you can read if you want to. Um, every every room, every place has USB chargers and then their electrical outlets. And then we have the ceiling here, which we have stuck a piece of cardboard there. I am a very light sleeper. And I'll open this up, get some light in. Um, I'm a very light sleeper. And if I see any light, I wake up. So that's kind of it for the inside tour of the trailer. So I'll be back in just a minute and we will get to making some soap. We'll see you later. All right, everybody, we're back after our tour. I did a few things and got stuff ready to make soap. Right now I'm measuring out my butters and oils. Um, oops, and I have just gotten my coconut oil and my cocoa butter in here and I still have a batch of my fly water cooling over here and then the rest of the kitchen's already starting to look a mess because everything's everywhere. So I have my coconut oil out. I'm actually using two types of coconut oil I'm using, which does not change the pontification level. There's no, no difference in the lye content for coconut 76 versus, um, Coconut 92, I think is what it is. Sorry, just gonna get a look as I scrape everything. Sorry, I'm gonna zoom out a little bit. So this, um, when you're making soap on the road, you have, there's a lot of prep work. So I had to go through and fill these buckets. Since everything's gotta be kind of in a smaller space, I had to go through and fill my buckets full of coconut oil, cocoa butter, um, I have my, Files, my buckets, vials, buckets of oil here. I have all my, I had planned out, I planned out every one of my colors and my scents um, that I have here. I have my colloidal oats and my kale and clay. I have my goat's milk in the fridge and I have my, that's where I have my water, my castor oil is right there in that big gallon jug, which is great because it fit perfectly there. Then I, I grabbed some butcher paper. I was worried about doing it on the table. I'm worried about the damage if anything gets on it. So I'm going to put some butcher paper down. Then I have my bucket here full of my immersion blender. Oh, there's my sunglasses. And, you know, my mixing equipment. Um, my, what is there? Oh, glad shrink wrap, which is supposed to go in the cupboard. And my apron. 
I even grabbed an extra mold just in case I have extra excess uh, soap that I need to do, um, stamp, things like that. And then I have my, I only brought, I have to do 15 loaves of soap, but I'm only going to do um, like nine loaves today. So I'll be using all of these. There's nine loaves right there. So I'm going to be doing three batches today. Um, the ones I have to do right now, and I didn't even get the stuff ready for my fall stuff. So I'm going to do that when I get home. I'm doing lavender eucalyptus. I'm going to be doing my sweet raspberry vanilla, which I use black raspberry vanilla. I'm going to be doing white wild raspberry and tangerine. I wasn't going to do that, but it is so popular that I thought, okay, I'll make one more batch and then we'll phase it out at least for the summer. And then um, I'm going to be doing love spell, which I don't know if I have enough of it. And, oh, actually I have two more I have to do. So our road is being torn up. I think I've said this in a previous video. Our road is being torn up and because of it, our postman would not bring in the mail. Um, he's not, wasn't our res regular guy. Um, I'm totally blasting him because it really made me mad. Our regular postman would have walked the 20 feet into our street to deliver the mail. But this guy, he didn't. So Saturday, I was supposed to be getting a, my order from Midwest and Lovesville was supposed to be in there. So I don't know if I have enough. So long story short, I am going to mix maybe, if I don't have enough, I'm gonna mix a little bit of this sweet, um, this sweet orange, what is this called? Sweet orange chili pepper. Because it does smell quite similar. It's very fruity. And I think that might make a good combination. And then my fifth one I've got to do is my oatmeal milk and honey. Um, that is using honey powder, goat's milk, and colloidal oats. And then what I did is I got these impression mats. Let me, let me see if I can open this. Hold on. Okay, so I got these impression mats. And the company is... Oh my gosh, who is it? Ellison Acres, Ellison Acres Soaps. Um, I will leave her link down below. I actually got this, I was watching, I think it was Ashley Marie Soaps. And so I got these and they fit my mold very perfectly, but I'm gonna actually take a pair of scissors, I'm gonna mutilate this, and I'm gonna take this and go down like this in a wave pattern, because that's how I style my soaps. So I have actually enough to do four trays um, three, but I thought if I really didn't like it, I actually brought some of my good old uh, bubble wrap just in case. So we have everything ready to go here. Um, I oh yeah, there it is. There's my honey. I use um, for when I especially when I travel, I use honey powder instead of regular honey, and it helps also. It doesn't heat up as much. So we are going to go ahead and put this on the stove and. And let me move my stuff out of the way put that away this is one thing about when you're soaping in a small area and those of you who do soap in small areas even in your home know everything has to be put away really fast sorry I'm trying to make room here and talk to you at the same time so you have to put everything away like in between everything and that's what I'm having to do now so okay and that started and we're going to melt that down. I didn't have a bowl that could work in the microwave that is small enough. So, you know, we're just dealing with that. So we'll be back when these are melted and we have everything mixed in and we're ready to go. Okay, so we've gotten... Oh, by the way, welcome back. Ha -ha. Um, we have got our oils and our additives all added in here. Now I'm just waiting for the lye water to finish cooling down. I should have mixed it early this morning when I woke up and I didn't. So I'm kind of stuck with having to wait. My oils right now, my oils, yeah, they're between 89 and 92 degrees, which will be fine. But my lye, rider, my lye water is coming in at 121 degrees. So I want to get that down at least 20 degrees. So I don't have my batch going crazy so we will be back in just a minute with the making of the soap as soon as my lye water cools down okay everybody we're back we're going to make our soap so i'm going to mount this on my little camera stand and so i hope you guys can see okay 
This is a new setup. I may, I may end up moving over to my table, maybe. Um, hoping that we can get good enough light. Let me turn on a few more lights. Where is it? Uh, I don't know if that really works. Oh, here's one that's kind of a backlight. How is that? To me, it looks... I only have so much room underneath my counter. So hopefully. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna move this out of the way. So I have my color in here. The color I am using. Oh, well, let me go back. Let me tell you what we're gonna be doing. Today we are going to be making, right now we're gonna be making the oatmeal milk and honey. And that is from Nature's Garden. And then I'm going to be using Goldfinger as my colorant. So I'm only gonna be doing one color and then I'm gonna be using the natural color of the soap for my second color. Oatmeal Milk and Honey is by far one of my most popular uh, fragrances that I sell. I don't personally use it. I don't like foodie scents, but people love it. And so I have no problem making it. It sells out in my body butters, my lotions, um, candles, wax melts, just about anything I put it in. It's just a really delicious scent. I think it's just, it just really smells like an oatmeal cookie to me. And kind of reminds me of my grandma. She used to make these oatmeal chocolate chip cookies every once in a while. Her big thing was chocolate chip, but every once in a while she'd make some oatmeal chocolate chip. And they were really good. So my lye water that I had in the freezer just cooled down and I have had my colloidal oats, my honey powder, my kaolin clay just sitting in my oil mixture, just kind of soaking up and just soaking up the oils. I used a tiny bit of the oil, maybe a tablespoon of the oil to put into my uh, Goldfinger Mica powder so that we could, so it'll blend a little bit easier and we don't have to worry about any specks. I'm glad we're grabbing some gloves. That was one thing I did remember to bring is our gloves, is my gloves. Okay, we're going on our maiden voyage of making soap in the trailer. Fifth wheel, RV, I don't know what you wanna call it. So, and my solution is just water and lye. It, the sodium hydroxide, I actually forgot the sodium lactate. So I'm hoping that doing a 50-50 water solution in my four ounces of goat's milk in here, that it'll still hard enough that I can uh, cut it. Otherwise I might have to wait and cut it on, let's just pray that it cuts, okay? Because it has cocoa butter in it, it should, um, it should harden up okay. So without further ado, let's get soaking.
everyone. We are back to cut the oat milk and honey. 